Can you misuse grace and can you fall from grace? Those are the two questions that Peter and I are going to uh, discuss today on the program. Uh, we're continuing to answer your questions and I uh, want to invite you to contact us uh, at www.gracelife.co or all of the information to contact us will be on our website or on the screen. Uh, please send your questions in. We're having a great time uh, answering your questions and hopefully provoking you to more questions. Um, you know, we don't want to, I believe a good minister doesn't minister questions. Yeah. Uh, what I mean by that is that we don't uh, minister questions that would um, shake your faith or uh, are unanswerable. Yes. Um, a good minister answers questions. Um, answer, uh, sorry, ministers answers, but might stir up some more questions in the process. I think Jesus used a lot of questions. Mm. Uh, that's one of the Amen. ways that he ministered. And he often uh, he answered questions with questions. Um, but we now have a, a mystery revealed. So we're hoping to answer your questions with answers. Um, like Shane said, we'll ask some questions just to, just to wake you up and make you think. <laughs> and in, 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 in a lot of our episodes that we've been doing or programs that we've been doing, I'm pretty sure we would raise some questions for you. Yeah. You know, it's not wrong to have questions. But I think what a lot of people and a lot of you might do is sit there with your questions mm. and not try and get them answered. Yeah. And uh, seek. Because Jesus said, you know, it, it, you, you'll find if you seek. Those who, to those who seek, uh, they'll find. To those who knock, the door will be open unto them. So let's seek so that we can find. Because if we don't seek, we won't find. Yeah. And I want to I invite you to seek with us. Mm. Um, don't just say, yeah, so-and-so on TV said this, or Shane said that, or mm. Peter said this. Mm. Like, you need to figure this out for yourself. You need to be convinced in your own mind. You need to be completely convinced, Paul mm. says. And, and you, need to be, um, you need to believe. <laughs> mm. You need to believe these truths to, to be set free, because that's so important. A lot of the time, questions will come up for us. Not because we know the, well, the word so well, mm. but we know what we've been taught so well. Yeah, that's good. Um, and so the traditions that we hold on to or the teachings that we hold on to so well, um, I know for me, this is the mm. thing. It's like as uh, a lot of revelations started coming to me in the last uh, few years, a lot of uh, questions that popped up for me popped up because of teachings that I was so well uh, yeah. indoctrinated in. I was yeah. so well established in. And <laughs> now I'm jumping into things that, I, that, that maybe I, I shouldn't, but I want to encourage you. Like a lot of the time, we, we, we feel shaken mm -hmm. with questions that come up because we hold the man of God above the word of God. That's good. And, you know, I'm all for honor. We need to honor men and women of God who labor in the word and encourage us in the word and encourage us in truth and all of that. But let's make sure that we're not holding them above the Word of God. Mm. If a man of God preaches something that's contrary to the Word of God, let, let, let's, uh, let's challenge them on it. In an honoring way, yes, but let's not accept everything that every person on television, Christian television, says yeah. to us. Let's go back to the Word. Rightly divide the Word mm. and come to some conclusions. In the last two, three years, I've gone through a process of correcting myself with the Word. And allowing the word to correct me on things that I believe. Yeah. I've redefined certain things and I've had to answer certain things in a different way. For example, and I'll throw this out without answering it so that it raises a question that you hopefully send into us. But, you know, I have come to see that the, the, the blessing of Abraham is not material wealth. And I've had to correct myself on that. Amen. Anyway. Yeah, um, two, what's it? 2 Timothy 2.15 says mm. you need to be a worker. Mm. You need to study. You need to rightly divide the word of truth. And it doesn't come by hearing. Mm -hmm. It comes by hearing. But hopefully what you hear in these programs will get you to work in the word, to labor, to study this Amen. out. Amen. Because really we want to, be, uh, bring, a, we want to bring you into freedom. Mm. Uh, stand fast in the liberty where Christ has made us free. Mm. As what Paul writes to the Galatians. And he says, do not be entangled again with the yoke of bondage. Mm. So we have looked at what it means to be complete in Christ, but part of Christ's completeness means completely free. And I think that's so important. But that's I mean, good. that brings us to the question, then what do we do or can mm. we misuse mm. grace? Can we abuse grace? Can we fall from grace? Um, I mean, 
you can even throw in can you backslide mm. as a Christian if we get there. But uh, yeah, Shane, you answer that for us. From so so <laughs> let's let's start off with uh, can you misuse grace? And I would say yes. Mm -hmm. The answer is yes, but. We have to define what that looks like. Yeah. We have to look at what that uh, that is. And um, you know, uh, uh, let's actually start off in, in Romans chapter 6. <laughs> I'm laughing because that's not where I was planning to start. But we have to start off here because the way that mm. people are asking the question, can you misuse grace, they're thinking of sin. Yeah, license to sin. License to sin. Mm. And uh, But we need to answer it in terms of, what does it mean to, to misuse grace? Mm. And so we will look at That's that. Good. But Romans chapter 6 verse 1. Shall we say, what shall we say then? Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? Mm. The Passion says that God's kindness and grace will increase. Mm. <laughs> so, you know, Paul's answer to that in verse 2. I love how he's asking a question. He's answering his own question. <laughs> That's actually pretty cool. But in verse 2 he says, God forbid... Well, what a terrible thought. He, he's saying, God forbid. It's the strongest way. In the Greek, he's, mm -hmm. he, it's the strongest way of making a definite no yeah. without using profanity. <laughs> so, you know, you think of the worst way to say no in your culture, and that's what he's doing. He's saying no. Okay. Uh, 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 definitely no. How shall we that are dead to sin live any longer therein? So he's saying we can't. We, 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 we can't, uh, 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 we shouldn't sin more to be able to uh, get more grace. Yeah. The, the amount of grace we've got is the amount of grace we've got. Okay. I mean. that, that's the first thing which is important for us to say. I, I like how, how one minister put it like this. Grace is no, by no means a license to sin as much as electricity is a license to electrocute yourself. Mm, that's good. So if you've got an, a, a power supply a plug in your home, you don't, because you've got that, that, that plug point, you don't go and stick your fingers in it no. just because you can. <laughs> or you don't can take a, you know, some people's uh, wall, your fingers are too big to fit in those, those holes. Go take a, 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 a piece of wire. And go and stick it in the hole there. Please don't do this. <laughs> but but it's like we just because you have the power, the ability yeah, yeah. to do it, doesn't mean you should do it. That's good. Okay. So the question of can you misuse grace? I suppose yes, you can in the sense of by just using the grace card all the time. Yeah. But the issue is is isn't um, that grace is a license to sin. It's not a license to sin. But it's it's it it. it it, grace is that you're completely forgiven, Amen. even if you do sin. Yeah. Okay. Um, what is it in Titus? Titus chapter 2 verse 11 says, The grace of God that brings salvation has appeared to all men, teaching us. So the grace of God mm. teaches us that denying ungodliness and worldly lusts, we should live soberly, righteously, and godly in this present world. So... <clears throat> Praise God that when we make mistakes or when we sin, we're forgiven. Amen. That His grace covers that. that. There's an abundance of grace. Romans chapter 5, verse 16, 17. There's an abundance of grace available to us. That means we're always forgiven. Amen. Okay? But mm. <laughs> grace teaches us to live godly. Amen. And the more graceful we are, we should, the more godly we should be living. Yeah. Okay? So the question was, can you misuse grace? Can you misuse grace? And I want to uh, 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 answer that from now 2 uh, Corinthians chapter 6, verse 1. What, is it mis what does it really mean yeah. to misuse grace? To receive the grace of God in vain. Sure. Okay, that's what we're talking about. Because we focused, most people when they're answering that question or ans asking that question, we're focused in on sin. Yeah. Okay. If I choose to live in sin, am I misusing grace? Yes, but let's grow up yeah. and ask the question in a different way. Yeah. Let's focus on the question in a different way. Okay. So what does it mean to misuse grace? What does it mean to misuse grace? 2 Corinthians chapter 6. Before 2 Corinthians chapter 6 comes, you have 2 Corinthians chapter 5. Okay. <laughs> 
Um, profound uh, it, revelation. Profound <laughs> revelation. It's basic arithmetic, but it's um, you know the the Bible wasn't written in chapters and verses. Mm -hmm. It was written in books, and the, the the chapters and verses are added there to help us to uh, make make sense of it and navigate and navigate. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So if I say turn to two Corinthians chapter five verse uh, uh, seventeen, you know exactly where to go, and it's easy for you. But uh, without those reference points, we would have to say, turn to the place where Paul says. <laughs> and uh, if you know your Bible well enough, you, you might be able to do that. But God help you if you get a new Bible. Sure. Because, <laughs> or, you know, you would, every time you'd have to kind of search on your, your electronic You're Bible. Have to, to search phrases. But it says, uh, therefore, if any man be in Christ, Amen. he's a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things have become new. That's, that's amazing grace. Yeah. That's amazing grace. You didn't do anything to become new except come into Christ. And how did you come into Christ? Faith. Faith. Then he speaks about how we've got a ministry of reconciliation, verse 18, with a word of a message of reconciliation, uh, verse 19. And now you're an ambassador for Christ, verse 20. And God is in us, pleading with the world through us, Amen. be reconciled to God. And then verse 21, here's the grace of God. Read it for us. For ye have made him to be sin for us who knew no sin, that we may be made, might be made the righteousness of God in him. Awesome. So the grace of God has made you righteous Amen. In, God, in, in Christ. Now you are 100% right with God. 100% of the time. Verse uh, Chapter 6, verse 1. We then, as workers together with him, Beseech you also that you receive not the grace of God in vain. So you've received the grace of God so that you could become a new creation, so that you could become a child of God, so that you could be made righteous in Him. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Now, don't receive that grace of God in vain. Don't misuse the grace of God. Don't take the grace of God for granted. Yeah, the passion says, allowing it to have no effect on your lives. So what would it mean that the grace of God has an effect of, on your life or doesn't have an effect of your life? I think that's an important question. Yes. I think one way is, um, is, is, is growing up. <laughs> mm. If you ask the question, uh, like, can you misuse grace? Can you fall from grace? Mm. Can you frustrate grace? That's what Paul speaks of as well. Mm. Um, we should be careful that we don't make it about us. Because Christianity really is a call to grow up. Mm. And a, a lot of like the sin issue, the sin questions, how far is too far? Can a Christian sin? And mm. all those questions. It's about us. It's actually self-centered. Mm. Where we are called to, to live for more than ourselves. We are called to lay down our lives. We are called to live um, so that other people can get saved. Mm. And I really believe that, um, that we need to, to grow up and answer these questions in that manner. And, um, and, and we need to not frustrate grace or put it aside. Mm. But grace is what got us saved. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so when you, when you, when you fall mm -hmm. from grace, for instance, you don't, you're not losing your salvation. You're just not operating mm -hmm. in grace, which I believe then would, um, would, would, the result would be, Shane, that, that no one else gets saved because of your ministry. Mm -hmm. Because oh. people need to hear the gospel, exactly which is the it. grace message, to get saved. Now, mm -hmm. you might be saved. Well mm -hmm. done. Lucky you. But what about the other people? Mm -hmm. So do not make this about you. Mm -hmm. Amen. We are saved by grace through faith. That's mm. so important. That's what we do. That's how we get saved. But now then, the, the correct use of grace would then be to share it. I believe that's, that's, so a, that, that, that's what God wants for us. So if we go back to verse 5 now, because it's the same story, the same letter, the same thing that he's trying to com communicate. Yes. Here. And we go to verse 15. It says, um, uh, I'm going to read it from the Passion. It says, so that those who live should no longer live self-absorbed lives, True. but lives that are poured out for him, the one who died for us and now lives again. Mm. So he's saying, you know, Christianity is a call to selflessness, not self-absorbedness. Yeah. <laughs> if that would be such a word. And it's a tragedy it is. that in the body of Christ today, the majority of teaching is self-absorbed mm. the, the majority like most of us if we're honest why did you click on this teaching why did you why are you listening to this teaching i would love to assume that everyone has got selfless reason for it you <laughs> want to mature you want to grow 
to be able to be a blessing. More effective minister. Most people aren't doing that. Yeah. Most people are we, the the the, uh, um, the biggest um, uh, uh, the most watched messages are the most messages that that appeal to self. Yeah, live your best <laughs> life now. Exactly. Yeah, and so you know it's clickbait. Yes. It's a, it's the things that that attract the most uh, watchers. The thing, you know. So, you know, if we were just to have a teaching on, we're gonna we're gonna dig into Second Corinthians chapter five and six today, and we're gonna see what the Bible has to say to us. That's gonna be very poorly uh, <laughs> uh, uh, supported because most people don't want that. But yeah. talk about um, uh, how can you fall from grace? <laughs> how can you avoid losing your salvation or something like that? And people will be like, wow, I need to listen to this. Yeah. Or how do you fulfill your destiny? Amen. <laughs> yeah, people will click on that. People want to hear that because it appeals to self-centeredness. Yes. And most of us, if we're honest, are driven by self-centeredness, Amen. not driven by Christ-centeredness. Yeah. So anyway, <laughs> please still love us. Please carry on watching. <laughs> Verse 15 here is then talking about how we, 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 we receive salvation so that we can live for Him. Amen. The end of that chapter then is talking about righteousness. You're not righteous for yourself. Sure. You're not righteous just to be able to say, I'm the righteousness mm. of God in Christ Jesus. I'm going to heaven. I'm righteous. <laughs> I'm, you know, most of us like in church and in our lives, we're like, I'm going to declare what God declares about me. I am the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. Whatever he says about me is true. And, you know, and we kind of like get into this, this, self-centered um, chorus yeah. about I am what God says I am. I can do what God says I can do. Amen. But when we're saying those things, we're thinking about ourselves mostly and not about the world. Amen. For God so loved the world yeah. that he gave Jesus. Amen. It wasn't for God so loved himself and was so infatuated with himself that he sent Jesus so that everyone could just love him. No. He was consumed with the idea of someone else. He didn't come to the world, Jesus now, didn't come because he was consumed with himself. He was consumed with us for God so loved the world. So now we, we, this is what we, we're picking up here. Why did we become righteous? Why did we become right with God? Well, one of the reasons is, is so that we could properly represent him Amen. as his ambassadors. So we could set things right in the world. Okay, then chapter 6, verse 1. It says that we then as workers together with him. Mm. The passion says now, since we are God's co-workers. Yeah, we, we need to see what the, what the word is showing us here. We are workers together with him. We are workers together with him. The New Living Translation says as God's partners. Now there's a partnership that's taken place between us and God when you become a Christian. We partake in the spirit. Yes. We partake. We, we, we are now one with him. We partnership in a sense of koinonia and sense of fellowship, in a sense of communion. We are communing with him. We're one with him now. And as partners with him, Paul then says, we beg you not to accept this marvelous gift of God's kindness or grace and then ignore it. So when we receive the message of grace, when we receive the message of the gospel, we shouldn't ignore it. That would be misusing grace. Mm. Misusing grace isn't just, oh, now I can just go live in sin and do what I want. Misusing grace is also not necessarily living in sin, but just not living in the purpose of telling other people about the goodness of God and sharing the gospel with people so that they have an opportunity to receive His goodness. Misusing His grace and taking the grace of God in vain is not functioning within your birthright, within your God-given purpose to be His spokesperson and His ambassador and even fund the mission, yeah. give towards the mission. I think, I mean, it's such an important question, Shane, mm. because this gives grace a bad name. Mm. People using it, sleazy grace, greasy grace, mm. I'm sure mm. you've heard those terms mm. as well, as a license to sin. I mean, I know people mm. who, who's done that and I'm going to see them in heaven but they're not, li they're not going to take anyone there with them. They're not going to mm. live for more. And I mean, if we want to be like Jesus, then mm. Jesus laid down his life. Um, I mean, if you take the passion there from verse 2, um, mm. it says, For he says, I listened to you at the time of my favor, and the day when you needed salvation, I came mm. to your aid. 
Who do we know that needs salvation? And are we going to use grace to get them saved? Are we going to use grace to live for more than ourselves? I mean, two, um, Galatians 2, um, at the end there, from verse, uh, verse, verse 21, um, it says there that, that, that we are, um, let's start with verse 20, I am crucified with Christ. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Nevertheless, I live, yet not I, but Christ lives in me, and the life which I now live in the flesh, I live, live by the faith of the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. Mm. So you are dead. <laughs> Amen. So none of those things should really speak mm. to us. Mm. If we realize that our carnality, our flesh, our old man is dead, now we are spirit beings. We're living for more than ourselves. And really when Jesus said that it's more blessed to sure. give than to receive, Amen. we can call this teaching the more blessed life. And people <laughs> will click on it, but then they would think that we lied. Because the more blessed life, and take it from someone and from Shane who's living this mm. life, is to lay down your life, to live by His grace and His faith, which is not our faith, it's the faith of the Son of God. Yes, and that gives us faith in the Son of God, but that now empowers us to live by grace. Mm. And I mean, I had to answer these questions um, to good friends and to family, like because grace has got a bad name mm. because people are misusing it. Yeah. Can you misuse it? Yes. Mm. Should you? God forbid. Mm. What is the purpose of grace? Maybe is the question we should be That's answering. True. And yeah. the purpose of grace is to get people saved. Mm. <laughs> Amen. It's to lay mm. down our lives because we can never pay the price. He paid the price. I submit mm. to his crucifixion. I become one with him. And now I live with his purpose, his mission, his calling, mm. his destiny. You so have a good. calling. Stop waiting for your calling. Your mm. calling is to go out into all the world Amen. and preach the gospel to every creature. And you're going to live more fulfilled. Depression, mm. anxiety, those things disappear when you live mm. for your higher calling. Should so I get good. excited about this? But uh, <laughs> <laughs> So misusing grace. Would be, yes, uh, uh, just going and living in sin. Uh, but you're still forgiven. You still mm. got the grace has not left you. Amen. But there's a greater misuse of, the, of, of grace. Mm. And that is not functioning within your purpose. Sure. Which grace is empowering you for. Amen. And that is to be his ambassador. You know, we all called to be part of God's global worldwide rescue plan mm. of reaching the unreached, the unchurched, the unsaved. And, and helping them come to a revelation of who God is and get discipled mm. into the truth. And, you know, you might not be called to do it like we're doing it right now, but we're all called to do it Amen. through our giving, through our sharing it with other people in our, and within our sphere of influence. Because let's face it, you're watching this program now and Peter and myself are able to minister to you. But there's a lot of people that you know that aren't watching this program Amen. right now. And, and you, we can't, that you know, and we can't reach those people, but you can. Mm. You can by taking the message of the gospel and going and sharing it with them. Amen. Amen. And then, you know, this program is also reaching people that you don't know. Mm. And so, you know, if you wanted to give towards this program and give towards GBS and whatever else, then there would be an, an it would enable us mm. to be able to reach more people. Amen. And so, you know, that's all part of being part of uh, 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 reaching more people for Jesus. And so that's, that is one of the ways in which we don't take the grace of God in vain. But then there's another aspect to this. And that is, uh, that often comes up and people ask the question of, so can you fall from grace? Yeah. What, what, what do you think that, that's talking about, Peter? So let's see where they get it. Galatians 5 mm. and verse 4 says, Christ has become of no effect unto you. Whosoever of you are justified by the law, for you are fallen from grace. And now, I mean, the answer then to the question is, can you fall from grace? Paul answers it, and he says, yes, you can. But he's not saying that you're losing your salvation. Mm. I think that's an that, that's, that's a, a interpretation. That's what we've been taught, maybe mm. like where you started. Like the man of God said, if you fall from grace, you, you, you're not sure about heaven. Well, if you're born again, you're born again. I mean, that's a teaching for another day. You've probably done mm. one on this program already. But fallen from grace, I believe, is really using, losing the effectiveness of the gospel message, which then is God's power, according to mm. Romans 1. And, and, and now you are you, you saved, you go to heaven, well done on you, but you're not taking anyone with you. Yeah. Because now you go back into works, because that's really the, 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 the context there. You are trying to be justified by the law. Now he says, as you got saved, so as you received, mm. now walk. Mm. So you received in grace, now walk in grace. That's and cool. that walk means you're going places. Mm. <laughs> a lot of Christians want to sit. Amen. Mm. Um, we need to rest. Yes, you need to rest in your salvation. But now you start at finish and now you go. You walk. Walk out your salvation. Work out. Mm. What do you take with you? You need to take the power of God with you, Shane. 
Romans 1 and verse 16. Yeah. The gospel, the grace message is the power of God unto salvation. That's good. So if we fall mm. from grace, we lose our effectiveness in the kingdom mm. and we're not taking anyone mm. with us when we go be with Jesus so, one day. So, like, yeah, it, w- when we're trying to be justified, made right by the law mm. and not just faith in Christ, then we, bec- we what you're saying is we don't become effective. Mm. That's the first thing. Christ is, is not effective through us. But yes. then obviously we're not experiencing the effects of Christ in our Amen. lives the way that we should. Yeah. That's when you know, we, 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 we're in bondage to law, mm. to legalism. And, you know, if you go down um, chapter 5, eventually it gets to the fruit of the Spirit and the works of the, the, works of the flesh and the fruit of the Spirit. Amen. And this is what it's basically saying. You know, if, if we're trying to be justified by what we do and not what Christ has done, if we're, we're trying to, like, um, I'm a good person, I'm, you know, I, I've done this, I've done that, and we're not focused in on Christ and the finished work, then mm. what it does is we're not experiencing the love of the Spirit, sure. the love of Christ mm. in us and through us. Mm. And as a result, people around us won't experience the love of God in us and through mm. us which means our witness is affected, Amen. and we're also affected. I mean, all of us want to feel the love. Yeah. <laughs> we all want to enjoy the love of God. Amen. And when we're trying to be justified, we're not focused in on that love. We're yeah. focused in on the works of the flesh, the yeah. arm of the flesh. And as a result, it's not, we're not allowing that to permeate our being. Yeah. And so you can't experience, experience the love of God in a frustrated person. Exactly. And which means my witness is now shut off. Now people don't want what you, what you, what you, um, not what you have, because you don't show them what you mm. have. Exactly. They don't want what you portray. Mm. Um, and then, I mean, there's a lot of people, they tell me who, who they think God is. And I'm like, I won't believe in that God either. Because God is good. God is love. And it says mm. there in Galatians 5, but faith. Mm. It's about faith. It's mm. not about works, but faith. That's good. That's the grace message. But That's that good. faith now is mm. activated by love. And the last uh, verse of 2 Corinthians 13, which is the last verse of that, that book, and Shane just comes to mind, and it says, The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, mm. the love of God, and the communion, the fellowship, the intimate friendship mm. of the Holy Ghost be with you all. And, I mean, we cannot separate grace, love, and intimacy with God. Mm. Like, and, and, I mean, faith needs love to operate. <laughs> but you cannot Amen. have love without grace. So it, it's, it's so entangled, but we cannot misuse it. And the best way is to just give God glory for His grace and let that have a work in you. Amen. And I'm going to finish off by reading uh, 2 Corinthians 13 from the Passion. It says, Now may the grace and joyous favor of the Lord Jesus Christ, the unambiguous love of God, and the precious communion or fellowship mm-hmm. that we share in the Holy Spirit be yours continually. Amen. Amen. Amen.